Praise the Lord, everyone. Isn't it nice to have power? Amen. Can we all stand to our feet this morning? I want to read for you a chapter out of Psalms. It happens to be chapter 23. I just felt this on my heart. And uh, many of you could probably recite it by memory. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and surely my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy is going to follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm glad that God led me to this place. Let's worship. Let's magnify the Lord of glory. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm like you, but I've come to give him glory this morning.
sought you, we saw you, we adore you, hallelujah. God who's worthy. Amen. John said, worthy is the lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world. Amen. He's worthy of everything that we can give him. There's a lot of things in life that you can overdo, but one thing you can never overdo is in your glory, glorification, and your worship, and your praise of Jesus Christ. You can't overdo that. You can't, you can't be too extreme. When it comes to worshiping the King of kings and the Lord of lords, he is worthy of everything that we can give him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. How many know that we serve a miracle-working God? I read this morning. I've got scriptures on my heart today. You'll allow that. This was the prayer of Habakkuk. In chapter 3, he said this, Lord, I have heard of your fame, and I stand in awe of your deeds. And he says, repeat them in our day, and in our time, make them known. Hallelujah. He was saying, God, I know you did it before. And God, I want to see you do it again. I've read... Of your marvelous works. I've read of your miraculous power. I know you've done it in the lives of others. God, repeat it again. If you've done it before, you can do it again. Your power is not limitless. God, your power is limitless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve a God who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is not diminished in his power and his ability. If you have a need, just let it be known it's by the lifting of your hands. And just say within your spirit, God, you've done it before. Do it again today. 
do it again today. And if you need prayer, we encourage you to come to the front. We want to remember Sister Michelle Cantu, who was back in the hospital and facing a, a, uh, a delicate surgery. We just want to uplift her today. We want God to guide the hands of the surgeon and also for Brother Graham's mother. She fell and broke her hip. She is in the hospital. We want to pray for God's healing power. Amen. And we want to pray for all those that are, that are mourning. Amen. The loss of loved ones. I see Sister Brianna. Sister, we've been lifting you up in prayer. God is holding you. He's taking care of you for the Choke family and so many others. Amen. We serve a good God. Amen. We serve a good and a merciful God. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. God, everything that we need is in you. Father, we pray that you would touch Sister Michelle Cantu right now. We pray, God, for the miraculous power of your hand to work. God, we ask you to touch Brother Graham's mother. God, in every need, every need supplied. Hallelujah. is working. Let's clap our hands to the Lord this morning. You believe that, that he works everything for your good? If you love him and you're called of God, amen. Hallelujah. I love what I feel in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, some say that Disney World is the happiest place on earth, but what I'm feeling right now, you can't fabricate this, you can't make this up, you couldn't make this into amusement, Brother Jordan, what I feel, hey man, the world didn't give it, and the world can't, sure can't take it away, hey amen, hallelujah, you can be seated, we got a few announcements. This Friday, August 21st, we have our Impact Youth Service with Brother Bobby Lewis. I still remember when the last time he was here. And we had all these broken rulers all over the place. Amen. Something's going to happen in our youth group. Amen. 
And also he's going to be here uh, Sunday as well, Sunday morning for revival service and our back to school service Sunday evening at 630. This is where we pray over all of our students and teachers and school staff for the, for the protection of God. If, if there's ever been a day that we need the, the hand of God to protect us, to protect his people, it, it's, it's the day that we live in now. And also this Wednesday is youth choir practice, musicians at 7, choir at 7.30. This Saturday we have a fusion fun day from 5 to 8.30 p.m. It's kickball, volleyball, dodgeball, and pizza. Amen. If you're a young person, say amen. amen. And then uh, this Saturday is a ladies shopping trip. Won't he do it? Amen. They're going to, going, going to uh, Starks, Louisiana to dress like an angel. They're going to meet at the church at 10 a.m. You're welcome to ride on the church van or you're welcome to follow in your own vehicle. Whatever is, is fine and convenient for you. Amen. And the ushers are bringing the uh, offering plates, I believe, to the altars. And, uh, and as you're able to get up, why don't we stand to our feet right now? It makes it easier to reach your wallets. Amen. Get you in that mode of worship again. We're going to pray for this offering. Jesus, we love you. We love what we feel. And we pray that you would bless this offering for the furthers of your kingdom. And we ask it all in the lovely name of Jesus. And let the church say amen.
one question tomorrow he turns 90 years old what's holding back your praise oh if you got a shame to praise the Lord let Come me on. see you clap your hands this is a man that's leading us directing us at 90 years old tomorrow and he says I gotta get out and I gotta praise let me tell you what he said he said this is the first time I've done this since the last time. So if this morning is the first time you've done it since the last time, why don't you just go ahead and step out and go ahead and get your praise on? I've got to pray. I've got to pray. I've got to pray. I've got to pray. Hey! 
right now would you lift your hands out of the abundance of the heart right now let the mouth speak unto the Lord come on with just the music hallelujah as you pray and worship him in the spirit right now that's it that's it precious child of God go ahead let that go Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we thank you. Come on together right now. Why don't all of us right now just begin to thank him for that word. I want you to receive that word. If it's not for you, receive it for someone that you love. Receive it for a lost family member, a lost friend. Come on, receive it right now. Jesus, in your name. Oh, I thank you. Thank you for your precious love. Thank you <laughs> for your mercy, for your grace. Rerabashi halabaye. Rishalabete rebedo. Roshalabahe lebete rebuha. Rialabashandahe debe busoye lebe. Rebashare lebete. Hallelujah. 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 Let me say this and then we'll move on. Josh, what just happened is the modern day fulfillment of the prodigal.
came back empty and broken. But the Father stopped all the business of the day. And he called him, my son. My son. My son. Without a doubt, Josh, God has something great for you, son. And the mercy of God is reaching to you as it has to so many of us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. believe God is going to bring us full circle to where we are right now, right here. And I want to preach to you briefly. And I will limit my time. I feel like God really wants to do something powerful in this house this morning. As you're opening your Bibles, I want to remind you, or just make your way back to your seat. This morning we are going to celebrate and have a grand time in the house of the Lord as we honor this great man and his 90th birthday tomorrow. Amen. And we're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time tonight. Amen. As we celebrate and do that, we want to encourage you to invite someone to the house of the Lord. And we're going to have a great time. Bring your gifts, bring your cards, bring cash. You get a gift card, let me remind you once again, get an Academy gift card, amen, because he always sells them all to me, amen, amen. We'll just see how far we get. Revelation 6 and 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. And one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. When he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a fair balances in his hand and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying a measure of wheat for a penny three measures of barley for a penny and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine and when he had opened the fourth seal I heard the voice of the fourth beast say come and see and I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of 
to you. I want to preach on this topic briefly this morning. The apocalypse. The apocalypse. If you would, put your Bible down and put your hand on the shoulder of the person next to you if it's appropriate or join hands or whatever. I want you to pray right now that God, God has been preparing our hearts and our minds right now. Speaking to us, challenging us. God, we love you. We need thee, O oh God. My Lord, I pray, anoint this human mind and these lips of clay, God, to convey to your people, O oh Lord, this word this morning, this burden, O oh Lord, you have placed upon me. I pray, Savior, in your name right now, God, strengthen, touch, give us ears to hear, hearts and minds that would receive what you have for us, Jesus. We love you. We magnify you. We thank you. Would you clap your hands in one more time before you're seated? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless you. You may be seated. Depending on one's proximity, it's what is called ground zero. The further away one may be, they may hear just a faint whistle. While those closer are nearly deafened by the high-pitched scream of the falling bomb. A flash of light that both blinds and almost instantly vaporizes those that are within a mile's radius of the impact zone. Those located within the second mile of ground zero may have a brief second to realize what has happened before they too are vaporized. Everything that can burn is either instantly consumed or catches fire. And a thunderous roar follows as a shock wave of destructive pressure levels everything nearly within three to four mile radius. Nothing is spared. Hospitals, schools, businesses, churches, men, women, children, the elderly, even animals are all indiscriminately destroyed within seconds. And those who instantly died are the fortunate ones. Those who survived but were severely burned by the radiation are much, much, much worse off. Left to suffer for days, maybe even weeks, before they succumb to their intense painful burns or the radiation poisoning they have received. All of these people left to linger without adequate medical care because the majority of hospitals and facilities that render first aid were completely leveled in the explosion. This is the depiction of the scene at Hiroshima when the atomic bomb was dropped on August 6, 1945, 75 years ago. And humanity has only become better at building weapons of mass destruction to use on one another. An apocalypse in today's vernacular is an event involving destruction on a catastrophic scale. Christianity today would say an apocalypse is the complete and final destruction of the world as described in the book of Revelations. And revelations for tales of this imminent cosmic cataclysm in which God destroys the ruling powers of evil and brings and raises to power the righteousness of those in his kingdom. And life as we know it today is changing quickly, spinning both quickly and dramatically, hurling each and every one of us minute by minute closer and closer to this end time apocalypse. The book of Revelations is also known as the Apocalypse. Those of you older saints here this morning who possess an older Bible can open it up to the book of Revelations and see that it used to be titled the Revelation of Jesus Christ, the Apocalypse. For the word Revelations comes from the Latin. The word Apocalypse comes from the Greek. And both words mean the exact same thing. It is an uncovering, a revealing, and the book of Revelations is without a doubt an, an uncovering and revealing 
of the age to come. It is an opening up to us the heavenly account of the final victory of God and the church. A, a revealing, an unveiling, an explaining, a making known the things of the future to you and I. Uh, an unfolding, if you will, for us the plan of God. A chart of the course of the Jews, the Gentiles, and the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we look at our New Testament, the book of Revelation is the only prophetic book in nature and a good portion of this apocalyptic book is a revealing a deeper explanation of Jesus's conversation with his disciples that day that is recorded in Matthew 24 in Mark 13 and in Luke 21 when they ask him about more information regarding the destruction of the temple the destruction of Jerusalem his second coming and the end of the age casual reader making their way through the book of revelations their mouth has a tendency to drop open and their heart begin to race as they read the events that are destined to transpire upon the earth and its inhabitants it is in revelations chapter 8 that we are introduced to seven angels who each hold in their grasp a trumpet seven trumpets in all that when blown signal the beginning of a very cataclysmic apo ap apocalyptic, I want to say ap apostolic. <laughs> apocalyptic destruction. The first angel sounds his trumpet. The Bible says there comes hail and fire mixed with blood and it is hurled down to the earth. The result is a third of the earth is burned up, a third of the trees are burned, and all the green grass is burned up. The second angel sounds his trumpet. And something like a huge mountain all ablaze was thrown into the sea. You see, John is doing his best to describe what he sees without the modern-day understanding that you and I would have to understand. It is a meteorite making its way out of the heavens into the sea. And the result of this is a third of the seas turned to blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea die, and a third of the ships are destroyed. The third angel sounds his trumpet, and a great star blazing like a torch fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and the springs of water, and the name of the star is Wormwood. The result is a third, a third of the waters turn bitter, and many people die from the waters that have become bitter. The fourth angel sounds his trumpet. A third of the sun is struck, a third of the moon, a third of the stars, so the third of them turn dark. The result is a third of the day is without light and also a third of the night. It is at this point the very angels of heaven begin to feel sorry for the inhabitants of the earth and one flies across the heaven and begins to cry out in a voice in chapter 8 verse 13, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blast about to be sounded by the other three angels. Revelations 9 introduces us to the fifth angel as it sounds his trumpet and John sees a fall start from the sky to the earth and the star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss and out of the smoke, locusts come down to earth and were given power like that of a scorpion on the earth. However, these apocalyptic Locusts do not feast on the grass or the plants, but these locusts begin to devour the flesh of humanity. Those that would not acknowledge Jesus Christ as their Savior and King. Revelations lets us know that they are not allowed to kill humanity, but only torture them for five months. And the agony that they suffer is like that of the sting of a scorpion. Friend, hear me out. Things are going to be so horrific during these days. The Bible says that mankind will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. Verse 11 of chapter 9 lets us know that these locusts have a king over them, an angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in the Greek is Apollyon, which is translated as the destroyer. I mean, stop and think about this for a minute. The God who created all heaven and earth, 
created the stars and the galaxies and everything there is. Uh, literally created an angel that is so horrific. An angel that is so powerfully fierce and capable of death and devastation that he has to be locked away in an abyss uh, and God himself labels him the destroyer. And this angel is unleashed upon the earth and the inhabitants of the earth. And without a doubt, the angel was right as it flew across the sky, crying out, woe, 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 unto the inhabitants of the earth. The sixth angel sounds his trumpet, and four angels were released to kill a third of mankind. According to today's population numbers, that, my friend, is approximately three billion people. But in addition to that, the scripture lets us know shortly after one-third of that humanity being killed is another 100 million soldiers of war that were prepared for battle as well. And as we look at this and, and make our way through revelations, and as horrific and terrifying as these events, events sound, we must always remember they are not shown by the Lord Jesus Christ to John to record and write down for you and I uh, for the purpose of scaring the church. However, they do do a really good job of doing that. They are a revelation, as the Bible says, a revealing and unfolding of prophetic information uh, given to a group of people uh, that he loves more than anything else, uh, to a group of people uh, that he took stripes upon his back for and nails in his hands for, uh, and it's given to you, uh, amen, a group of people that he loves. Uh, yes, every single one of these things uh, will come true uh, here on this earth as in heaven. Uh, and an apocalypse will come. Devastation like never has been seen will transpire. Massive numbers of humanity and animals and greenery destroyed. Amen. But not so that it would scare us. So that it would help us understand that God has a plan. And God has a purpose. And you and I here this morning are in the very palm of his hand. Amen. The very opening chapter of the book of Revelations, the opening statement, Revelations 1 and 1, says the revelation of Jesus Christ, the revealing of the one who was, the unveiling of the one which is, the unraveling of the King of kings uh, and the Lords of lords, uh, an unfolding, if you will, uh, amen, a revelation, an understanding uh, of the Godhead, uh, the mighty God in Christ, uh, and an unfolding of the mystery of the great I am. Amen. God wants you and I to both have as much information as possible and to know him in every conceivable way. First off, he goes on to tell us in verse 5 who he is. He says, I am the faithful witness. He is the first begotten of the dead. He is the prince of the kings of the earth. And Revelations uh, is a further unveiling of the one uh, that loves us uh, and gave his life for us. Uh, that loved us before we even knew him. Uh, and it's an unveiling unto us of that great love. Uh, it's a further revealing of the one uh, that has made and will make you and I kings and priests uh, unto God the Father. Uh, to him be glory forever, dominion and power. Amen. 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 Revelations is the great unraveling of the one that cometh with the clouds. That every eye shall see him. Uh, and also they which have pierced him. And all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. And in, course, in case you didn't know this morning. Revelations further reveals to us who Jesus was. For Jesus himself. Speaking to John in Revelations 1 and 8, says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is 
which was uh, and which is uh, to come, the Almighty. He was in the beginning. He is today, and he will be in the end. Friend, I want to tell you, there's no one else that stands uh, before him, beside him, or after him. There is none that compare, for he alone is God. Woo! Hallelujah! <laughs> oh, ain't you glad that you know him this morning? Amen. He speaks with a great voice as a trumpet saying, I am Alpha Omega, the first and the last. He holds in his right hand the seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance is as the sun shining in all of its strength. And he says to you and I, Fear not, fear not, uh, even though you look at uh, all the trumpets that are being blown uh, and it might have a tendency to scare you. Uh, when you look at all the vials that are being poured out uh, and it has the tendency to put some fear and anxiety in you. Uh, when you look at all the bowls that are being poured out uh, and the catastrophic cataclysm that happens uh, to humanity, he tells you and I, his bride, uh, the Jesus name, uh, blood-bought, sanctified, Holy Ghost-filled, holiness-living people, Fear not, for I am the first and the last. Amen. I am he that liveth, was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the key of hell and of death. And that, my friend, is just the first chapter of this revelatory unveiling of who Jesus is. I want to tell you this morning, the only reason to be afraid of the apocalypse the catastrophic description to, to come, the ultimate end of the age is if you don't know him. If you're not committed to him. Revelations 1 and 3 says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. And, what's the next word? Keep those things which are written. That word keep means to protect cherish, to guard, to value. Friend, in this last day, I want to tell you right now, it's not the day to start letting go of the things that are written in this precious book. <laughs> Blessed is he that keeps it. Blessed is she that holds on to it, guards it, cherishes it, loves it. <laughs> blessed are they. We are not blessed because we know who the Antichrist is or when he'll come. We are not blessed because we know what nation will rise against which nation during the tribulation. We are not blessed because we know how the mark of the beast will be given and when it's going to be given. We're not blessed because we know the color of the seven horses uh, uh, or the horses that they come and in what order they come. We're not blessed because we know the seven bowls and their wrath, what they represent or what the, the countries are that the creatures from the sea represent. Uh, it, we're not blessed because we know what day Jesus is coming back because the Bible says no man knoweth the day or the hour that he's coming back. Knowing those things does not bless your life at all. It does not help your life in the here and now. You and I are blessed because we know who the Alpha and the Omega is. We're blessed because we receive a, a greater understanding of the one that was slain from the foundation of the world. And we are blessed because we have the mystery revealed to us about who the first begotten of the dead is. Amen, you and I are blessed because we know who the one is that holds the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Amen, we know the one who's coming back on a great white horse and a sword proceedeth out of his mouth. And the Bible says the saints of God come back with him. We are blessed because we know who the Lamb is. Amen, who's worthy to open the scroll. And we are blessed because we know the one who makes the lion to lay down with the lamb. That's why we're blessed. Yes, we need to read through and attempt to understand 
the signs of the times. Just don't let your kids read it at night before they go to bed. Or they will be sleeping with you. But if we don't know who Jesus is, and we don't have a relationship with him, nothing else matters. If you haven't repented of your sins, been baptized in the name of Jesus, and taken on that name in baptism, been filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence and speaking in other tongues, you, my friend, will be left for the apocalypse. The greatest cataclysmic event to ever strike the face of the earth since the great flood of Noah's day. I know some people that say they're going to make it through the tribulation. They're going to make it through the tribulation. If you're one of those, you, you, you better study this apocalyptic book really good. If you're going to deal with plagues, diseases, wars, pestilence, stars falling from heaven, destroying large portions of the earth and the oceans, those people better be prepared. They're, 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 they're what we call today preppers. They've got bunkers. They've got guns. They've got, they got ammo. They've got food and, and water stored up and that'll last them three to five years. And, and they're ready for the tribulation to come. And they're going to make it through it. The greatest mass extinction in history since the flood of both animals and humanity will take place during the tribulation. And thanks to modern day technology, you will be able to see it unfold right before your very eyes and will be able to see uh, and hear uh, and maybe unfortunately take part in uh, the things that men of God who stood behind this pulpit uh, and tried to warn you against uh, and help you to make it out of and not have to go through. You will behold all of those things. You better be ready. Better study it out. Try to figure out where it's going to be safe to live. Study the geography of the world and where the highest places are and where the mountains will protect you and where you can hide away and try to survive off the land. Go ahead and download you. In fact, you better burn a, a, a hard copy of Hank Williams Jr., A Country Boy Can Survive. Because you're going to need it to encourage you. Figure out the best method to avoid having to take the mark of the beast. Or at least make sure that you're committed to the point that you'll have your head cut off before you take the mark. In fact, let me go a bit further. Make sure your children and grandchildren are committed that they'll lose their head before they take the mark. And make sure you're prepared to see that. I, I, it's not going to be easy, but I, I bet you can do it. I mean, I know it's, it's really not easy to live for God right now. I mean, I know living for God right now, you've got to give up so many things like, like all the things you're going to have to give up during the tribulation anyway. And the Peppers might be right. It'd probably be easier to live for God during the tribulation. I mean, we'll be more committed, right? God's spirit will no longer be here. It won't help you. It won't encourage you. It won't strengthen you. It won't pick you up. It, it, it won't protect you and guide you. Them pesky church members who always pointed fingers at you and took your pew won't be here either. Tell you what, once they're gone, you go ahead and come on down to the church anytime you want and pray and hold service all by yourself. Tell you what, during our next board meeting, or, or all church business meeting, Brother Beers, we're going to call everybody together and we're going to pass a resolution to give the church to the people that are left. So they can come down here, they can choose the song, they can play the instruments, they can preach the message, they can lead evangelism, and they can have the church service they've always wanted to have. And you can lead all the other committed people uh, that are left behind who were so faithful when we had service and the Holy Ghost and everything else during that time. Obviously, I'm being very sarcastic. <laughs> I want the musicians to come. I mean, all the things that we point at as to why we can't walk with God today. All the reasons we come up with. I'm too tired. I can't do this. Uh, 
I can't be involved in ministry because of that. Uh, all the reasons that we can concoct and come up with, friend, uh, are going to seem like nothing uh, when the day we hear that trumpet sound uh, and realize uh, our feet have not left the ground. Because you will know. Hear this man of God this morning. You will know and you will see and understand that the church has been caught away. That great day of God coming back to rapture his bride has happened and you've been left behind. Oh, oh. But, it, but it'll be so much easier to live for God during the tribulation. The reality is it'll be literal hell on earth. Revelations is not there so that you and I can figure out how to make it through the apocalypse. It's there to greater reveal to you and I that God has a plan. God has a plan. He's got you in it. You're a part of it. Even though you may think because of your situation and your problem, your ailment, whatever it might be you're dealing with in your body or in your mind right now, that it has precluded you and stopped you from being an effective part of the kingdom of God. I'm speaking to someone right now. You're in here. And in this book it says, the blood of the Lamb has washed you. The one that was slain from the foundation of the world. The one who walks amongst the seven lampstands uh, and holds the seven stars in his right hand has a plan for you. And his plan for you is not for you to have to go through all the tribulation. When is the rapture happening? I'm not totally sure. Is it pre-trib? Is it mid-trib? Is it post-trib? I prefer pre-trib. I really do. But we, go, we talked about this out in the fishing. My plan is, I believe in pan-trib rapture. You live for God every single day like He's coming back, and it'll all pan out. Whether He comes in the beginning, in the middle, or, or wherever it comes. But even in the midst of that, Mr. Austin, we got in this book right here, promise of peace yeah there might be chaos going on all around us but since he's promised us that he would be an ever present help in time of need and he would be a friend that stick it closer than a brother would you play that song I want to tell you what I feel in the Holy Ghost right now we have come full circle because God is reaching the people this morning you're not right with him I'm, I'm not judging you, please don't mistake me. I'm not judging you, but this, this book alone, alone judges each and every one of us. And we got to live according to this book. This book says, if I have not repented of my sins, been baptized in Jesus' name, and filled with the Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, I'm not one of His. If I'm not living a holy life, I'm not one of His. Hebrews says, without holiness, no man shall see God. And God is here. Right now, I want you to stand to your feet. This world will come to an end. And His Word will come to pass, every last detail of it. Including Revelations chapter 11, verse 15 through 17. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet. And there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Messiah. And He shall reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who were seated on their thrones before God, fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God, Almighty, the one who is and who was, 
because you have taken the great power and have begun to reign. My question to you this morning, is he reigning in your life right now? Because he will one day, whether you are in heaven or hell or whether you're somewhere in between, living a life, you will be reigned by him. He will be your God. He will be your king. He will be the one that you look to alone. But where you are determines, is he reigning right now? Is he reigning right now? I want us to close our eyes. I want us to bow our heads. Jesus, in your name, I, I want to open up this altar right now to anyone and everyone who wants to make their life right with him. Who says, I, I, he is, I'm, he's not reigning in my life and I want to get right with him. I want his spirit to wash me. I want his spirit to fill me and strengthen me, his blood to wash me of every sin. And I want to make sure that he's reigning on the throne of my life. Come on right now. There's others in this house this morning that you need the mercy and the grace of God to wash over you. Oh, Lord, I want to open up this altar right now to you. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Come on, I want all of us right now. Wherever you might be, join with someone around you if it's appropriate. Oh, make your way down to an altar. If you don't feel safe, then stay right where you're at. But make your way to an altar right now. You can get your life right with God. You can dedicate to Him. You can consecrate to Him right now. Ask Him to wash you, to purify you. Hallelujah, Lord, in your name. Oh, that's it. Come on, all across this house. There's people all around you right now. Come on, church, just look around. There's someone praying around you. Join with them. Put a hand on their shoulders. Oh, God, in your name. Yeah. That's it. Pray right now, Lord. Purify my heart, my mind, my spirit, oh Lord. Oh, that I would be right with you. Oh, let me say, let me.
Oh, I-